Okay, here we are again with this OSFS61 engine, and I'm going to continue doing the uh, partial or maybe complete disassembly. But uh, from the last video, I brushed this all down, and that last video at the very end of it, it explains everything I did to this. So I'm just going to kind of start moving on here. What you're seeing here in here is a bunch of the rust that's still kind of dripping off from these parts. Um, from the basically all it is is from the uh, three in one oil. Three in one oil really kind of does a number on rust. I mean it's what it's advertised to do, and it says that that it does that. I don't know if I want to try and pull this gasket off or just leave it. I think I'm just going to leave that. Because I'm afraid if I take that off, it's really going to break it. So, before, um, or at the end of the last video after that, I had already gone through and I broke loose all of these fasteners just to make sure I wasn't going to have any issues there. And obviously, I took that picture of the rear cover that was off. So, um, all of these fasteners are broken loose, so there's not going to be any, any scary moments here. But before I get too far here, I want to pull this glow plug because this is the a plug that came with the engine and I'm assuming that maybe it's the original since the engine was never run but I mean look at this plug look at that thing it's brand spanking new you wouldn't be able to tell that that just didn't come out of a the package I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get that washer or not here yep there we go <coughs> All right. Oh, the other thing I wanted to tell you is there was no compression on this engine and the exhaust valve was stuck. Well, what I did was I put 3-in-1 oil in here pretty liberally. In fact, unfortunately, that probably means there's going to be 3-in-1 oil on the top of the piston because I put a lot in here and heated it up and I just heated it and I waited for that exhaust valve to just pop up because of the spring there. So before I pulled that plug out, I could have proven it to you, but I did have compression. This engine did have compression. So let's just uh, get on with removing stuff here. The thing, the only real concerns I have is that maybe the uh, O-rings on these pushrod tubes might be degraded and really no good. I don't know that I have anything like that on hand. Sounds like Teddy's outside stirring up some shit with the birds. Yeah, that's it. Okay, here we go, finally. After long last, look at that. Look at the top of the piston. I'm going to put the head down. Just gonna, oops, I was going to say just gently move this stuff off to the side. Yeah, there's a lot. I put a lot of, a lot of oil. Uh, yeah, these, looks like this. Unfortunately, those lower pushrod uh, rubber pieces are just, they're gone. <clears throat> that kind of sucks. But anyway, so here you go. Look at that. Beautiful piston. I don't see any debris or damage in there at all. In fact, I think maybe I want to move that out of the way. Okay, so here's the reveal on the head. Look at that. If that doesn't look brand new, I don't know what does. And I know what brand new looks like because I've seen plenty of it. That's brand new. I really didn't want to disturb those screws because I don't really know that I'm going to completely disassemble this engine now. About the only other thing I really want to do is uh, take this rear cover off and I'm going to take this off. The other thing I think might be uh, toast on this is this gasket on this rear cover, but I'm pretty sure those are still uh, readily available. Here's a closer look at the inside of this thing. Look at the inside of that cover. Look at that. Look how beautiful that is. Now, I don't know what engine manufacturers do to engines prior to shipping them. I don't know if they 
doesn't feel like there's any kind of oil on here at all. So it doesn't look like or feel like there's any oil in here other than maybe what may have dropped in from my doing the uh, 3-in-1 oil. But on the inside there's really nothing. There's nothing on that connecting rod. So I don't know how they prep that if they just are cleaned and dried. But I have seen engines like this you know 30 plus year old engines that have never been run before and you open them up inside and they look brand new and I've mentioned it in a couple of videos saying to people you know if you have a brand new engine new in box engine that's you know 30 plus years old or even less you know for that matter I've heard people say well I probably need to put oil in it and preserve it well no you don't because look at this look how messed up the outside of this engine was and is there anything wrong with the inside of this thing nope not one thing so you don't need to put any oil in a brand new engine that's never seen fuel before no matter how old it is because chances are it's fine look at this think that bearing looks like it needs to be replaced I say not and it also doesn't look like there's any lubrication on there. There's that cam follower. Look how perfect that is. I'm not going to disassemble this engine any further. The only other thing I am going to do is I'm going to get my, put this back on, get my gear puller. So now that we're in here, and now that everybody's seen the condition of this engine and we know that it is brand new, I am going to do a little bit of lubrication. I'm going to put a little bit of lube in here now, just because that's what I do. Not a ton, just a little bit. Doesn't really need it, but I do plan on running this engine here in the very near future. So, it's going to get some lube. Throw these things back on here real quick because I'm not going to. I just need to pull that drive hub off and check the health of the Woodruff key and make sure there's no rust on that. And if there's rust on that, I need to clean that off and check the front bearing just to make sure on the outside if, if the outside looks good then I'm sure the inside is going to be fine too the only reason I'm wondering about the outside is because there's this gap here and that's what I did and there's our Woodruff key which looks to be in pretty good shape so I'm not too concerned now about the shape of this, you can see the front of the bearing is a sealed bearing, so it should be fine. Just want to clean off some of that little residual rust that was on the crankshaft there, and I think that pretty much concludes uh, the look inside of this engine. Next thing you'll see me do with this engine is have it strapped to a uh, strapped to a stand and run it. Now. Um, I do have other parts in the bin here. The carb barrel is here. It was kind of rusted in some spots and that's why it wasn't turning. I need to, you know, sand it down with some 2500 grit paper some more and get it a little bit cleaner. But other than that, high speed needle is in fine shape. Let me wipe it down. It's all covered in oil right now. But it's, it's in good shape too. So carb I still haven't done anything inside there I need to get some q-tips and get in there and clean that out real well but I think this engine will be in uh, excellent shape here very soon at least internally so we can run it